Okay, I showed you some pictures for, oh, maybe because I mentioned a lot of things that I'd covered with the pictures in this book last time I talked to you. For you new, new people that have tuned in to my site here, I went over this book for about 20 minutes uh, about a week ago. Now I want to finish it off. There's two more sections in here that are incorrect that I want to correct. Okay, we'll start out with a tiger shark. We've got about uh, 35 minutes of decompression. And... Uh, and we're sitting there, all in the, about four of us sitting down there. And the other three guys, they're looking at their depth sounder, and they're looking at their watch, and they're looking at this and that. But they're not alert. When you've been doing as much spearfishing as I have, actually spearfish for a living, okay, you know to keep an eye out for sharks all the time, okay. So all of a sudden, there it is, the shark. He's out about 90 feet. He's going across like this, then he turns, comes this way, then goes across again. I can see the stripes on him. Hey, man, this isn't good. It's a big tiger shark. So I move around, get around, get between me, them three divers between me and that shark. I don't say a word because the one, when they see it, the more surprised they are, the guy that's the most uh, shook up and, and, and panic-stricken, that's the guy that's going to get eaten, okay, if the shark attacks. So anyway, it's like you learned in the Navy here. Uh, if you run into an emergency or something like that, well... You save yourself first, then you go for help, okay? So I learned that, okay? Now, this shark is, is, is coming in at us, okay? And I've got these three divers between me, and he's about that big, and he gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Finally, they see him at about 30 feet, and they start tapping each other and tapping each other and looking at it. They're all panic-stricken and everything like that. He gets about 10 feet away, and he turns and goes away, probably because we looked like a big ball. We had no bleeding fish or anything like that. And it was midday, he probably feeds at night, and so forth like that. So that's the end of the story. No one on the ship saw it. This book here, it's incorrect. The ship didn't, no one on the ship saw it. No one warned us or nothing. We went up after the dive, so we seen a shark. Okay, that's the story. We're correct it right there, because it's not correct in the book. Now, the big giant wave, it almost kills me. Well, that's correct. Some of it's correct, but I want to get to the parts that aren't correct. First thing, uh, they don't know what happened to me exactly. I'll tell you what happens. Okay, we go out there to the ship. Well, first thing, them waves that night were so big, the island was shaking. Every time a wave would hit, we're trying to sleep on some cots, and uh, the island was shaking. Okay, so uh, we go out to the pier, and they're hitting the pier, and the pier is shaking. So we get the Zodiac, and someone's got to go out there and get the gear. Okay, so I'm in charge of running the boat. So I go out there with this guy, Rick. We load on some four or five tanks of air, or camera gear, and everything else and so forth like that. Then before I leave, I got my wetsuit. I think I'm going to put this wetsuit on. And then I think, oh, I'm going to put this buoyancy compensator on too, just in case something happens, okay? Okay, so we head in, and like they say in the book here, couldn't get the engine started, blah, blah, blah. Finally, the wave's coming. I got to finally get going. I take off. I'm heading straight for the shore, cut the boat hard. I'm running parallel to the pier, about 20 feet out and stuff. I'm heading and this wave is building and building and building. Eh, I don't think it was 60 foot high, but maybe 40 feet high. So I'm heading straight up it. And I'm trying to get to the top and get over it before it breaks, but didn't make it. It starts to break on me. So I got two scuba tanks and a gas can on there for the outboard. And I say, I got to get away from this stuff because this isn't good when this boat topples over and everything starts going haywire. So I dive up there, grab the end, and the boat goes over. Next thing, I'm being rolled along the bottom. Just roll, 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 tumbling along the bottom. But I haven't hit the reef yet. I don't know how that happened. Maybe I had enough buoyancy to get off the reef. Anyway, pretty soon, something's tugging on me. My buoyancy compensator's pulling on me. And I'm heading up. Man, I'm wondering, how long is it going to take me to get up? I'm holding my breath. I'm wondering, when am I going to get to the surface? Finally, I break the surface. I look over there at the pier. I start swimming for the pier. Okay. And there's the blivet diver looking at me. Just what I need. Okay, I get to the pier, and the water level on the pier starts dropping as this other wave's coming in. Instead of being uh, about 8 or 9 feet, it's about 10 or 15 or 20 feet. Man, I look at the jagged metal and the coral and all that stuff on that pier. I don't care what it is, I'm going up it. I, somehow, I made it up that pier. I don't know, I, I grabbed on to every, whatever it is, I don't know how the hell I did it, I did it, okay. Just when I got there, my last step I took, the blivet diver comes over and says, let me help you. I looked at that guy, and I said, I'll die before you help me. That's how I thought I felt about that guy, okay? So that's the last word I gave him, okay? So anyway, I walked down the beach. The Zodiac's upside down. They're trying to flip, flip the thing over. 
Oh, he's stuck underneath it. He's stuck underneath it. They finally get over him, not there. They start running up down the beach looking for a body. And I look at the two scuba tanks. You know, they're sitting there. Look like they got sandblasted, okay? There's no paint, nothing left on them. Oh, man, okay. So anyway, I hollered out, hey, here I am. So, unlike the book, no one threw me a rope. I did it on my own. Okay, the last part I'm going to tell you about, not in the book here, about the airplane. Okay, the Marshallese crew on there liked me because I was protecting them from the blivet diver that was ordering them around, okay? So uh, they gave me a 175-pound giant to try that in a clam shell. So I'm going to take that back as a souvenir, okay? So we're, I'm up there in the front. The pilot's here and the co-pilot's there, or the pilot here, co-pilot there. And they're roaring down the runway. And they get halfway, a little past halfway, and they go, man, we ain't got the airspeed we need. We need more airspeed. And the other guy, we're really loaded. What the hell they got back there? And I'm going, oh, man, this plane doesn't make it. I got a giant clam back there they don't know about. Anyway, there was like one foot of runway left. I mean, I think but the wheels rolled across part of the reef that was out of the water before we got off. Anyway, we got off and out of there. But they almost didn't make it because of my giant clam. I still got that clam in my backyard in a fish pond. I'm going to show you some pictures of it. Luckily, my neighbors never check it with a, with a Geiger counter.